Okay, so uh, I never mentioned this osculating circle yet. So if you have a curve in a plane, then at any point you may think about the best line approximating the curve, and that is the tangent line. And that is linear approximation. Now the next, geometrically, the next degree of approximation is going to be uh, by circles. And you may think about the best circles, uh, best circle approximating the curve. And that circle is called the osculating circle. And the way you define what it is, is the circle having three properties. First, it passes through that point. Second, the tangent line to that circle at this point is exactly the same as tangent to the curve. And third, the curvature of the circle is exactly the same as curvature of the curve. Okay. So in other words, uh, speaking of the orders in Taylor series, if you think about Taylor series of the curve at this point and Taylor series of the circle at this point, then these three conditions amount to the coincidence of values of the curves at this point. Okay, so that's zero degree coincidence. Then the fact that the tangent lines are the same means in terms of Taylor series that the first terms, first degree terms coincide. And then the fact that the curvatures are the same amounts to this uh, to the claim that the second degree terms for these two curves coincide. So in terms of Taylor series, the best circle is matching the curve up to degree 2, as opposed to the tangent line matching only up to degree 1. So it's just the next degree of approximation. Uh, now the practical question is how to find the, uh, the circle. And I'm talking about the plane. Everything is in R2. Uh, the first thing to find is, of course, the radius. And if the curve is given parametrically, then you find curvature. And if that is the point f of some t0, then you compute curvature at that point, and then Radius is exactly reciprocal of that curvature. So finding radius of the circle is easy and straightforward. The sort of more difficult part is to find the center. So to find the center, you can argue as follows, you know what the point is, right? It's f of t0. And then you know where the center is with respect to that point. You basically have to go from that point in the direction perpendicular to the tangent line. And you know already how long you should go there. Right? You already know the radius. So let's just follow that procedure. So the center, as a point in uh, a plane, is going to be f of t0. This is where you begin going toward the center. And then you make this step from that point to the center. And there are two things you want to know about this step, about this vector. The magnitude and the direction. And the magnitude you already know, that's the radius. The remaining part is direction. What's exactly the direction? Well, the conceptual problem here is that there are two directions perpendicular to the tangent line. So the question is, which one to choose? And the solution is that, geometrically, 
you know that the curve is curved either this way, positively, or that way, negatively. And that sign determines which way to go. So, algebraically, of course, you usually don't see the curve. So, without drawing a curve, you want to decide algebraically. So, what you do is you imagine the acceleration vector. So, acceleration at this point, if you think about a particle moving, right? So, speaking physics terms, uh, acceleration should be a vector in that half of the plane, right? In order to move particle along this curve, you have to accelerate it that way, not this way. So that acceleration vector, although not perpendicular necessarily to the curve, it points out in the right direction. So what you can do is you can think about that acceleration vector at the time t0, and then take orthogonal component of that vector with respect to the velocity. Because you already have this velocity f prime of t0. So you make a vector, orthogonal component of acceleration at t0. Well, acceleration is effectively the second derivative as a vector. Uh, orthogonal component of that with respect to the velocity. And that is the first derivative. So that is going to be a vector in that in the right direction. And that will determine this way or that way. But of course in this formula we want only direction here without magnitude, so you have to make this unit vector, so you divide it by its magnitude. That's it, that's how you find the center. And of course if you want the answer uh, to be in the form of equation of a circle. Well, then you know how to write down the equation. It's x minus c1, the first coordinate of the center, squared, plus y minus the second coordinate of the center, squared, equals the radius squared. That would be equation of a circle. So, any questions about this procedure?